the Surah of Tabarak, the, the most blessed. And we have so far reflected upon uh, the first ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabarak al biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. That most blessed, exclusively blessed, is the one uh, whom Allah subhanahu, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the most blessed. And uh, in his hand or in his authority is all of the dominion. And he has, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And he has power over all things. And then in the next ayah, we reflected upon الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا That it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the death or lifelessness and life ليبلوكم أيكم To see, to determine, to prove to ourselves أحسن عملا Who is the best, who is the better, who is the one who excels in deeds وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Almighty and He is the All-Forgiving. And then we looked at ayah number 3 through 5 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, starts out and, and ayah number 3 basically uh, talks about الَّذِي خَلَقَ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتٍ طِبَاقَ مَا تَرَى فِي خَلْقِ الرَّحْمَانِ مِنْ تَفَاوَدْ فَرْجِعِ الْبَصَرَ هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فَطُورُ it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has stacked up, synchronized, perfected, created in perfection the seven skies, one above another in layers. You will not find in the creation of a Rahman any faults, any consistent in any inconsistencies in the creation of a Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this we we very briefly reflected upon how this ayah number three through ayah number five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a means that if we go out and we truly reflect and we truly ponder upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His magnificence, the synchronization, the perfectness in, in creation, and we do this sincerely and truthfully time and time and time again, the result of it is that we will be put in our place when you compare the magnificence, when you see the awesomeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you see the feebleness of ourselves, this should put us in our place. This should humble us. This should make us to realize who we are. And then in the sixth ayah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transitions and starts talking about what he mentioned in the second ayah. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتِ that it is Allah Ta'ala who is the one who has created the death and the life to see which one of you are best in deeds. So in ayah number 6 through 11, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is now turning our attention back to the two groups that is identified in that test. Obviously, there can only be two, people who pass and people who fail. And in ayah number 6, through 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the details of the people who fail, the losers, the, uh, the, the people of the hellfire, and the details of it. And then in one ayah, in ayah number 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the detail of the people who pass the test. And we, ta we talked about this a little last time where the scholars mention that in general Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran he spent his more detail is given on the details of Jannah on the details of reward on the detail of those people who are successful than the details of the people who fail but in this surah it's opposite here at the beginning and this is akin again to the message, the general message of the surah, the scholars mention, the general theme of this surah, wake up. It's to wake people up. It's to shock people to wake up. Hey, you don't have much time. You have to realize who you are. You're on this earth for a purpose and a reason. You're here on this earth to be tested. And the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sign is everywhere. And you need to wake up before it's too late. Realize who you are. 
you're going to die. And in the grave, we'll start the, you know, the scholars mentioned we're given like a, like a, like a stub, a ticket, like on a journey. The first stub is torn out when we are born in this world. The second, uh, when we are conceived in, in this world. The second stub is when we live in this world. And the third stub is that the moment that we die. That's it. That's the start of the permanent life. So again, wake up. It's a wake up call, surah. And the details of Jahannam here, the, the, the details of the punishment are put here for that reason, to wake us up. And the analogy or the example the scholars tell us is like the alarm clock. Sometimes, you know, uh, the little iPhone or the little Android is not enough to wake us up. Like for example, for Fajr. We need the old school alarm clock, the one with the big bells, the one you twist and you set, wake up at 5.15 Fajr. And it's so loud, subhan like to wake up your neighbors, you know. So this, this is the general theme of the surah, is, is here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the details of Jahannam to make the reader of the Qur'an here to realize, wake up, you don't have much time. And subhanAllah, I look out, I look at some of the youth, subhanAllah, and this is an action item for you. And this is an action item for those who are less youth, youthful than you, like myself, for example, that we only have a, a we only have a limited time. We're only given so many resources. Rasulullah said, grab five. Grab those five before five. Your life before you die. Your youth before you become old. Your leisure time. Your free time before you become busy. Your, your wealth before you become pover go into poverty. So these are all amana. These are all trusts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to wake up and realize who we are. Life is not all about Xbox and PlayStation and watching NFL football and NBA. SubhanAllah, it's much more than that. It's much more than that. We need to realize who we are and we need to realize our responsibilities and we need to realize, SubhanAllah, the, the trust and the manna that Allah SWT has given us and that we will be held accountable for on Yom al -Qiyamah. So in ayah number six, we started looking at uh, the, the, the details of the punishment that is awaiting those who are disbelievers. And for those who have disbelieved, past tense, and birabbihim and their Lord, is the is the adabu jahannam, is the punishment of the hellfire. Wa bit sal masib, and the most the most wretched, the worst destination ending is that. You know, you got a destination to go somewhere. Allah Ta'ala is telling us here, that is the worst destination to go to. That is the worst place to go to here. And, and Allah Ta'ala is saying, kafaru bi rabbihim. Those who disbelieved in their Rabb. Allah doesn't say kafaru billah here. And the scholars mentioned the wisdom behind that is that even the disbeliever who's reading this ayah should realize, this is, this is my Rabb. This is my maker, Rabb meaning master, Lord, cherisher, creator, the one who's taking care of me, the one who gave me all of these na'mat. This is the one that I, that I disbelieved in, you know. So it's, it's creating that sense of obligation, that connection, that Allah is the Rabb. He is the master. He is the Lord. He's our cherisher. And we are the Abd. And we are his slave. And so we started looking at last time some of the details of now of this the worst destination to go to. 
So in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, starts quantifying, giving the details of that worst destination to go to, that hellfire. إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا سَمِعُوا لَهَا شَهِيقًا وَهِيَ تَفُورٍ When, when they are cast therein, سَمِعُوا, they are going to hear لَهَا, from it, شَهِيقًا, this beastly, you know, like this inhaling, like a beast, like an animal, like a lion, like a tiger, inhaling this hellfire. This is the, the detail of the, the hellfire. This should, this should put the horror in us. You know, if you've seen a movie or a documentary of a lion or a tiger that's about to pounce at and attack its prey, about to destroy it, about to tear it up. Something evil that's about to attack. This is what we're talking about here in, in, this, in this eye of the scholars mentioned. This is the quality of this hellfire. This inhaling, this terrible, terrible, terrible sound. Some people talk about tornadoes, something like akin to that. That you've, if you've ever been in a, in a tornado, it has this terrible, ooh, you know, it's like a growling, rolling sound, subhanAllah. That's the kind of destination awaiting for these disbelievers. So it's not something to be laughed at. It's not something to, subhanAllah, it should shock us. It should wake us up. We, sh we should realize this is some serious stuff we're talking about here, subhanAllah. And so, ulku, uh, the, 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 the implication of ulku, it, it, the root of this word, of being thrown in or placed therein, it's like, it's like taking, you know, how these children, they, they take, like, they go around, they, they find bugs and stuff, and they take a, a jar and they place it in, you know, into the jar. So this, this ulku, it's the, the implication of it. It's, it's not just being placed in, but it's like being thrown in in a very undignified way, like you just throw in a bug in a jar. This is how these people, the people of the hellfire will be thrown in, in a very undignified way. They'll just be cast, thrown in there, without any kind of mercy, without any kind of thought or anything like that, subhanAllah. It's just thrown in, like you throw a bug in a jar. This is how they'll be thrown in there.